30 seconds in this scene and it was sort of detailing yeah. everything and it was pretty close to how they'd actually filmed it it was pretty awesome um so i reckon it's probably that great you've, you've answered my question yeah <laughs> excellent <laughs> next <laughs> next yeah no i love that so, I, yeah. I, I love that film so much dude really really cool it's great yeah the cinematography and the actors they got for it are mm. perfect i mean tommy lee jones's <clears throat> face is just like it's like a a, a worn out leather cowboy boot isn't it it's just it's, it's like a... wrinkled and gnarly and his expression is a scowl oh it's so good yeah yeah he's he's real yeah. good he's real good he's like the grand canyon in face form yeah yeah brolin's yeah. good as well right sure um woody harrelson oh yes I've, in fact in my rewatching, i've not i've not got back hit got him in harrelson, yet. Okay. harrelson yet but yeah i remember he's good he's a great actor he's I don't know. Is he underappreciated? To me, it seems like he is. Because he's so. sort of a throwaway comedy. You know, he plays a few weirdos, a few kooky characters, but he's actually a great actor. Sure. Have you seen him in the um, the one with Kevin Costner recently, The Highwayman, where they're tr- entrusted with the task? No. They're like, oh, yes, I did. What am I talking about? Yeah, I have seen that. Amazing. Yeah. They've got to catch. Is it Bonnie and Clyde? Or... Yeah. No, they're, it's they're, not Bonnie and it Clyde. Is. Oh, no, no. It's, no. no. They've got to catch some famous. No, it, is Bonnie, it is Bonnie and Clyde. I'm pretty sure some famous Isn't villains back in the day. But it's the guy girl. I'm pretty sure it's Bonnie. Maybe it is Bonnie and Clyde. I think it is. Yeah, because it because it yeah. breaks down. It gives you all the historical photos of the car at the end, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty sure it was Bonnie and Clyde. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think you're right. I could be wrong. You don't seem convinced. I I think it was. <laughs> I think it's because I watched another Bonnie and Clyde thing. Very. Very soon after that, and right. I think I'm merging the two together. This is Netflix's fault because they, like, they put a film out there, and then everyone watches it. Everyone thinks it's great, and they think, "Oh, great, we'll put all the other things related to that sure. on there." So all of a sudden, they bl- like they blend into one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they they blow all their chips in one month. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, but I'm I'm with you yeah. on that. That's a that's a great one. Um, anything else you've been seeing? Uh, oh yes, not it's not a film, but I think we can still keep keep it in film club. It's the unsolved mysteries. Oh, Netflix. I wonder where you heard thingy. that about about that from. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, cool. So yeah, uh, anyone listening, I am uh, like I'm a true crime fan, <laughs> true crime buff. Like anything, anything to do with that, you know, the c- serial podcast, all these Netflix true crime docos, you know, David Fincher films, you know, every, anyone who likes that sort of genre, like really goes in, mm. goes in deep with that sort of thing and just watches everything. But yeah, this is a series that Netflix have made uh, called Unsolved Mysteries. And as the title suggests, they're on, all unsolved. And each episode is a different, um, usually a murder or it's presumed that it's a murder that they haven't solved. And it's just like creepy, freaky, things going on and it's like you know you watch it and you go oh my god i can't believe the police didn't find this or like they never interviewed this guy or like you know you finish watching the each episode and you've like got a hundred theories in your mind as to what actually happened and it's just you know it's just engrossing basically or just all these old crimes like it can get a little bit gruesome but if you you know if you've got a strong stomach it's good it's good fun great no it's i i have seen my partner uh loves it as well um i think you you and her get on really well again you that's like you have a lot of stuff to talk about with that and i <laughs> i'm glad you do because i don't um i so, probably text her more than you yeah do i think you might like, <laughs> oh my god have you seen this new thing on amazon prime or like on netflix or whatever it's so good <laughs> oh man it's um it, i i do enjoy it like i i enjoy it a normal amount i think but i it's not my favorite thing to watch in any way shape or form and like we were watching one the other day about ufos is i think this is the same series it's the and same I've not series seen that. that's that's the next episode that i'm going to watch sure, yeah sure which but, and it was pretty crazy i won't tell you anything about it because you're going to watch it but yeah it but it's like yeah i don't know it's not for me not for me <laughs> <laughs> nope not for <laughs> me <laughs> but that's okay that's absolutely fine that's yeah, okay yeah. for everyone else to have their to have their yeah, own it leaves thing. the band the bandwidth for me mate exactly <laughs> that's it exactly right exactly right um nice. cool man you've been busy with films dude that's good yeah yeah well yeah just Got just a few yeah just that one film and the, and then a few episodes um yeah that's about it 
I mean, it's not been long since we last spoke. So. That's true, I guess. Yeah, I think if I'd have seen anything more, there'd probably be a problem. Like, yeah. <laughs> wasting far too much time <laughs> watching films. Sure, sure. Um, Dude, is it whiskey time. time. Oh. It's that time. Cool. So today, I am drinking a Talisker. And despite being designated the, uh, the pronouncer earlier in the show, I'm going to have to ask your help for this. Okay. This, this is, again, similar to last week, this is um, not a standard... Like bottling, this is one of their sort of, you know, I call them like director's cut things mm-hmm. where, they, you know, they're special edition things. And this is like Port Rouge, Port Rouge, spelled R-U-I-G-H-E. G-H-E, R-U-I. G-H-E, like Port Rouge, Port Rouge. Port Rouge, Rouge. You know, some, yeah, no something idea. Something along those lines. <laughs> I've no idea normally, how to pronounce that. Yeah, what port do they normally use? I forget what the name of the port is that you normally use, but it's not that... So maybe this is a type of port then, I guess. Oh, yeah, I would imagine it would be, yeah. Okay, okay. Because you get guess. like Oloroso sherry casks and you'll get different types of sherry and different types of port and wine and stuff. So that's... Okay, got you. Because it does say uh, directly under that, finished in port casks. So it's, mm-hmm. yeah, that must be a, this, the specific type of port. But yeah, this is great. It's like quite a ruby color. It's like mm. it's reddish. Um, it's reddy, golden color. And... Um, it's got a hint of smoke, a hint of peat, because it's a Talisker. Uh, but it's also got that sweet sort of fruitiness that comes from it being um, uh, aged in a port cask. Love it. Yeah, it's yeah. a beauty. Talisker's great. Tal- a, a, a really good sort of, like you say, like half pe- half smoke, half not, half peated, half not um, kind of dram to get, get your nose in um, if, you're, yeah. if you're not familiar with that kind of tastes. Um, okay, let me tell you about this bottle. I'm kind of excited about this one. This is a, I'm going to open this on this podcast right now. Um, uh, and you were here at the purchasing of this one, actually. I bought this at the uh, London Whiskey Festival. Oh, nice. Yeah. This is what we were talking about a few weeks ago. Sure. About this the ticketed event where we drunk loads of whiskey for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> you can go back and listen to you the story. It, yeah, you yeah. get it. Loads of whiskey was involved. So I was there with Adam and I had tried this before at a different whiskey festival and I was looking them out specifically so that he could try it. Um, and it's Few. It's from the Few distillery in America. And it's um, it's not a bourbon, though. It's their single malt. So it's their version of a scotch, effectively. But because it's made in America, they can't call it scotch. So it's 100% uh, malted barley distilled um, to make this. And I would recommend that. If you can get an American... If you're not a massive bourbon fan, if you can get a single malt from an American uh, distillery, like Woodford, Woodford Reserve do one, that's quite cheap and it's so good. Their their bourbon one was good. Bourbon is good as well, but their single malt is fantastic. And anyway, this few one, now they describe it as tasting like uh, cappuccino, cherry wood, and caramel. <laughs> now, all the hell <laughs> okay. I could taste is it tastes like sawdust, man. Like, oh, I remember tasting it this. Tastes, yes. yeah, yeah, it yeah. tasted just like, um, and this isn't going to sound great, but it tasted like a hamster cage smells. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was. Th- I was just thinking. It was a rabbit hutch, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember thinking about that. Now, Matt, so a couple of questions: Do they call? Do they call it single malt? Like, does it say single malt on the bottle? Is that what yep. Americans call it? Yep, yep. Uh, and question two: How is it spelt? How is whiskey spelt on there? Oh my goodness! Very good question. I, I didn't even notice this, but it's spelt the Scottish way. Ah, how weird okay, is that? So maybe. So maybe you could tell our dear listener um, the thing the thing with the spelling of whiskey because lots of people, you know, people are always like, has it got an E? Has it not got an E? You know, yeah, sure. Pe- lots of people don't know. So. so there's, yeah, there's two spellings of whiskey, basically. This is interesting, though. This kind of breaks the rule. But the rule of thumb is if it's got an E in it, it's not made in Scotland. So whiskey without an E in, it usually is scotch. Um, any Scottish whiskey... Um, Blended Scot- uh, blended Scottish whiskey as well counts, um, is known as whiskey without the E. Um, but generally bourbon or any Asian whiskey or anything like that, that will have an E in it at the end. Or like the Irish. Way. Or Irish, Irish for example, or exactly. Yeah. So, um, however, this single malt from America 
has spelt it with a Y, which is very interesting. And it, and it's bottled yeah, in yeah. Illinois. It's made in Illinois, Il- Illinois rather. So um, they've kind of broken the rule there. Um, but there are no laws about that, to be fair. The only laws right. that are in place are things like scotch, bourbon. There are certain criteria you have to meet in order to call your spirit that you make, scotch or bourbon, single malt, those kind of things. You can't just put yeah. that on a bottle of... You can't put single malt on a bottle of blended scotch and get away with it. You'll get like sued and you'll be fined a lot. So, um, yeah. Um, sort of like appellation control, isn't it, in France, where they, you know, to call something champagne, exactly. they've got to jump through a whole load of hoops. It's got to be made within exactly a very specific area. You know, it's sure. the same with like cheddar cheese or, you know, there's, you can find a hundred hundred other things like that. hundred percent. And it's, it's quite interesting because they, they've, I feel like they've done it on purpose because there's rules to make scotch. So, for example, scotch needs to be aged in a pre-used barrel um it can't be um a brand new oak barrel um it has to be something used by bourbon or um, wine or port or sherry or anything like that whereas bourbon has to be used in a new barrel so they've made by using these laws to call it a certain name like bourbon or scotch they've created this perfect like ecosystem where the bourbon makers will make their bourbon yeah exactly and then they'll sell the barrels to a scotch maker and they need it so it's like it works out perfectly it's quite interesting Everyone's a winner. You got it. Oh my Especially god! Especially us drinking the different types of whiskey, because we get this this whole plethora of different flavors that we can enjoy. Hundred percent. So I'm guessing ours ours tastes very oh dissimilar. Oh my god! So <laughs> because mine mine is like Christmas cake. It's like syrup. It's like uh, like caramel. Like uh maybe cherries as well that sort of like mm. dark dark fruit all the sort of fruits that you get in christmas cake and that syrupy mm-hmm. dark sugar muscovado sugar that all that yeah. sort of thing 100 percent. yeah yeah uh, how about you the complete op- well i mean i don't know what the opposite of a christmas cake is but maybe a hamster's hutch is the opposite of a christmas cake i don't know because it's it, that, yeah they're, <laughs> they're about as far away as you can yeah. get aren't they? now it's obviously that doesn't sound nice or that appealing but it's just so interesting and it is nice i am still enjoying it i probably wouldn't in all honesty i probably wouldn't spend an entire night drinking this um but as a one-off just to dip into it's just it's just crazy like I have never tasted anything like this. Like it's a completely unique taste and it's still called whiskey. It's still a whiskey, you know? So it's, um, oh my gosh. It looks, it looks quite light even over, over the internet. It looks quite yellowy and strawy. It's very yellow. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's like a light whiskey because it's very yellow. Um, and I don't know why, <laughs> because it's it's not like because you get those like um, a lot of Isla whiskies, especially the ones in the green bottle like Ardbeg or Lagavulin. You'll when when you pour them out, you'll see that they're they're almost clear. They're very yeah. like almost water clear. Whereas this is an it is super light coloured, but it's very yellow. <laughs> um, right. So and I just man, I honestly don't know how this flavour has happened. Um, but does it give any description on the bottle? No, as to how that's they, the thing. They just dis- you know. all no, no, not in terms of how they got this flavor. But they they describe it as cappuccino, cherry wood, and caramel. Maybe caramel. Yeah. I could see there is it is quite a sweet, sweet flavor. But the, on the nose and the taste, especially the nose. But it, it's like sawdust. It's like the dust, the sawdust. Not dirty after you've had a hamster in there for however long. But when you first put it in there, yeah. Anyone who's ever had a little hamster or a rabbit or something as a kid will know that will know that smell yeah surely when your mum tells you to clear out the rabbit cage or whatever <laughs> exactly. the hamster hutch yeah <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's just it's crazy it's it's so you know some people should we i struggle sometimes to get f- smells and flavors out of whiskey you know that i can pick out specific flavors and notes from it whereas this mm. one is the easiest thing in the world it just it's just <laughs> <laughs> sawdust it's unbelievable i love it i cannot get over it it's, i love it so much nice i guess mm. it's the sort of whiskey that you would have in a collection right so if you're the uh, if you're the sort of bloke that just has one bottle of scotch in the cupboard mm. just for when when the mates come around or whatever that's probably not the one you would go for but Definitely if you had a, if you had a handful or if you had enough space um 
to have a you know a bourbon and a rye and a couple of different single malts whatever you might include this in your collection wouldn't you for like you 